care of someone with dementia is the feeding and nutrition. Between that person's lack of interest in eating and their difficulty swallowing, it is so hard just to get calories into their body. You've probably had to come up with tons of tricks to do that. And over time, you've probably seen those tricks start to work less and less. You see their clothes getting looser. You see them coughing more during meals. You find yourself desperate to get calories into their body in, in some way, just any way. And along comes a doctor who offers a feeding tube as your solution. They say the feeding tube will bypass the swallowing difficulties and give your loved one extra nutrition. But will it? Will a feeding tube actually solve your problems or just make things worse? Let's talk about everything that you need to know about feeding tubes and advanced dementia. I'm Dr. Tyler, and this is How to Train Your Doctor. All right, so let's talk about what you need to know about feeding tubes and advanced dementia. When I say advanced dementia, now I'm talking about dementia that's reached the point where the person is not getting out of bed, at least not on their own. They're not really talking much either. Maybe they say one or two words a day that you can understand, but certainly not having any conversations with you. And around this time, they start to get other medical issues like uh, a lack of coordination with their swallowing muscles, something we call dysphagia, and issues with food and liquid going into their lungs instead of their stomach, something that we call aspiration. And it's around this time, too, that they just may simply lose interest in eating. It, even one meal a day may be all that they're interested in having. And in this context, doctors may bring up the option of a feeding tube to you. Now, a feeding tube can go by a couple different names. A peg tube, G-tube are the most commonly ones that we use in the vernacular. They both refer to these little bendy pieces of plastic that uh, get surgically inserted through the stomach wall, through the skin right over the stomach. You can connect those to longer tubing that connects to a pump with a, a bag of or a bottle of artificial nutrition. And, and that's your setup for, for meal time then is you know, pumping those nutrients directly into the stomach. And these feeding tubes are pitched as a way of supplementing the calories that the person's not taking in on their own, the calories that they're not wanting to eat on their own. And it's also pitched as a way of bypassing all the swallowing difficulties. And intuitively, it makes so much sense, right? If the person's not taking in enough calories, use the feeding tube to supplement those calories and get them back on track. If they have difficulty swallowing, use the feeding tube to bypass that difficulty and, um, and keep them safer. And from the doctor's side, you may be feeling like this is your only option. Doctors will say stuff like, well, they need this to live. And if you feel like your choices are feeding tube or they die, well, what else are you going to do? The problem is that's not the whole story. And you really need the whole story if you are going to make an informed decision about whether a feeding tube makes sense for the person you're taking care of. The rest of the story is that there is no evidence that shows feeding tubes help people with dementia live longer or feel better. The evidence is so bad, actually, that the American Geriatric Society actively recommends against feeding tubes for nutrition with folks with advanced dementia. And there are quite a bit of side effects that go with feeding tubes as well. Uh, we've seen that behaviors and agitation, just dementia symptoms in general, can get worse with feeding tubes because there's a foreign body in this person. They don't understand why it's there. They try to pull it out, sometimes successfully, and they end up going to the ER to get it replaced. And they're in an unfamiliar environment with unfamiliar people. And this can go on and on every, every few weeks. There's also the issue of, of pulling out that feeding tube leading to restraints, whether those are physical restraints, you know, actually tying them to bed, or chemical restraints, meaning we give them sedatives to make them too sleepy, too unaware of themselves or their surroundings to care about pulling out the feeding tube. And we've actually seen feeding tubes make bed sores worse. For a time, we thought that the extra nutrition from feeding tubes would actually help bed sores, pressure sores heal. And the reality is they, they make them worse. So there are some significant downsides to a feeding tube and really no clear upside to the feeding tube. And you may still be left thinking, well, what, what am I supposed to do? Aren't they going to die if they don't get enough food? 
Now to really address this issue, I do need to say some fairly serious stuff here. And I would pause here and say, if, if you are actively taking care of someone with dementia and you don't feel like you're in a place either physically or emotionally to hear serious news, I would encourage you to come back to this video at a time when you can hear serious news. Because here is the final piece of the puzzle here. It's not that this person with dementia will die if they don't get enough nutrition. They are not eating, they're not taking in enough nutrition on their own because they're dying. The reality is that when folks with dementia get to this point where we're talking about feeding tubes, we are typically measuring their life expectancy in months rather than years. And, and that's because the dementia, it's a progressive disease. It's a terminal disease that impacts the entire body, not just the brain. So you may be hearing that and wondering what on earth are you supposed to do? And here I would say, take this as encouragement that you have been doing everything already. The standard of care here truly is careful hand feeding. Even if that's a few bites a day, that bit of human interaction and that loving care that you're providing is everything that you can be doing for that person. There are a few other things that you can bring to the conversation with the doctors though. And as you talk about feeding tubes, specifically to the person you're taking care of with the medical team, if you're like me, you may like to make plans based on what's most likely to happen. And if instead you're someone that likes to make decisions on what's possible, even if it's a small possibility, then maybe this advice isn't so helpful. But if you're like me and like to make decisions on what's most likely, I would ask the doctors directly, what do they think the feeding tube is likely to accomplish? Do they think it is likely to lengthen this person's life? Do they think it's likely to improve their quality of life in any meaningful way? And emphasize the word likely, because doctors also want to feel like they're offering hope and offering helpful solutions, even when the solution here is continuing to do what you're doing in the face of this change. And by asking what's likely to happen, you're giving them permission to be honest with you and share what they really think, which they may be cagey about unless you say that for uh, fear of you know, upsetting you in some way. The other thing that you can bring to the table is what you know about the person in the bed, meaning if they could understand their situation and comment on it, what would they say? What would they say about how they want to spend their limited time? What would they want that time to look like? And use those questions as a guide to kind of flesh out the plan and put together a plan that makes the most sense for them. I think it's also helpful to know that around this time, most folks where we're talking about feeding tubes, they are eligible for the support of a hospice team. So if you're leaning towards maximizing support at home with a focus on comfort, hospice may be a great extra resource to help you out at home. Whatever you do, I know you'll do what feels right for the person that you're taking care of. And let me also say thank you for all the care that you've been providing. I know the medical system is pretty awful at providing support to caregivers. You gotta make a lot of sacrifices. You gotta rebuild your whole life around this. And I wish there was more that we could offer on our end as a medical team for you. So thank you for everything that you're doing. And thank you for watching this video.